and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. It is Scholar Box unboxing time and I am reasonably excited about this. I do have quite a sore head today but I am trying to not let that affect me and I've just banged myself full of painkillers so hopefully that will get us through. Scholar Box, the only UK monthly art subscription box. Been on the go a long time now and I've really, really upped their game in the last little while. I just wish they'd up their game with their shipping. They're still using COVID as the reason why the boxes are later and later, but I'm not convinced myself because if I can get a box from Germany a couple of days after it's normally due, what's the problem, scroller box? Anyway, that aside, let's take a look. In these boxes, there's a couple of things that we normally get. Um, one of the newer ones is a scroller zine, so it's a little sort of mini magazine thing, which I really, really like. I'm really enjoying those. Okay, ooh, painty things. Look, painty, painty, this is exciting. So there's our scroller zine. We're not gonna look at it because we don't want to ruin the surprise. And here is our featured artwork. I love the fact that this is square. I'm really digging square paper at the moment. I think they're more aesthetically pleasing for framing as well. So this is a very textured artwork and it looks like either oil or maybe acrylic. And this is rather nice actually. I'm quite taken with that. I like things like this that are interesting. I'm never that creative, but it's good. Okay, so this is Bastian Marien, aka Bab2. So there's a little bit on the back of here about the featured artist as well as links to their social media. If you fancy going and have a gander at that, you can do. Hey, <laughs> this looks like our, oh, it might be bored. Oh no, there's quite a few sheets in here. This looks like I recently purchased watercolour board from Reeves and it's basically watercolour paper, but it's got like a cardboard backing on it and it just makes things a bit sturdier, uh, which I quite liked as well. This looks very textured, but we'll get a closer look at that in a moment. I love it when it's all nice and neat together like this. That's really sad, isn't it? We've got our scroller box sticker. Oh my goodness, there's all sorts of things in here. And I've seen one of these before. This is like a palette knife in credit card form. And they encourage you to use this to sort of smoosh the medium about on the canvas or paper. So yeah, we've had something like this before. This one's a lot prettier though, I have to say. <laughs> It's a lot prettier. So we've got our list of supplies as well, which again, we will look at in a moment. Here is our sticker for the month, which matches the, it usually matches the artwork or the front of the scroller zine more recently, but uh, this looks a bit more like the artwork and finding out where it fits in is always a fun game. Uh, I think it's this side actually, maybe in there somewhere. Yeah, well, let's see. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, oh, we have a new thing as well, scroller edits. This is something they forgot to put in the instruction um, on the list of supplies card and they've added it in later. So let's see what we've got. <laughs> oh, we always get a sweet as well. And this month it's a, it's an Anglo bubbly. These blow huge bubbles, they're amazing. They're also very sweet as well. You can practically feel your teeth falling out when you're chewing it. So let's see what we've got. Yes, as suspected. First things first, we have a Faber-Castell uh, 9000 series pencil. I use these all the time. I included these in a recent video I did when I was talking about different grades of graphite. So this is a 2B, which is my favorite or one of my favorites to use. It's a really versatile pencil and I like it just because it's that wee bit softer than an HB, which is really nice for getting some shading and stuff in. But I don't think we're going to need it for that this time. We have a paintbrush. So this is a Pro Art Series 60 Pro Lawn. So it's obviously, I was going to say artificial bristles, <laughs> synthetic bristles. But yeah, the ferrule and the handle are a bit bent. See if I just turn it like that, you can see it's slightly um, skew with. So that's a bit concerning. My ferrule's dodgy. So this is a number eight and this is a number eight round. I quite like the Pro Art brushes. I've got quite a few of them. And not the not these ones, that's bigger brushes and one thing a bit more interesting brushes, but I actually quite like them and they're really reasonably priced, so I'm willing to give that a bash. And we have here three tubes of Daler Rowney System 3 Heavy Body Acrylic. Okay, so it's acrylic paint and this fits in really well with my suspicions about this. Heavy body acrylic is thick acrylic basically and it's so that you can use it in the same way as oil paints and it will behave in the same way in terms of texture, not in terms of drying time. 
Uh, so I'm, I really like this because I, I quite like sort of just sort of making a mess basically and squishing it down in the paper. I've been working quite a lot in acrylic and I have got heavy body medium that you can add into normal acrylic paint and it just basically thickens it up so that you can get some of this lovely texture that you can see in the featured artist's work. And thankfully they have given us Thank you, thank you, thank you. They have given us the primary colours. So we have Process Magenta, Lemon Yellow and Process Blue. So that means you can mix more or less anything you want within reason, which is lovely jubbly. I, would, I am willing to say though, on this featured art work, I see white. And that's something that we can't do with these. So I think there might be a bit of cheating going on here, but that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll let that one slide. So let's see what it says about our supplies. The scrawler edit. So in, this is the, the addendum, if you like. It says, if you haven't already noticed, the pencil we mentioned in all the printed elements of this box is not the pencil we have included. Unfortunately, the pencil we had originally chosen for this box was not manufactured and delivered in time, so that's why the box was late. Okay, so this is the 2B pencil we're talking about. It's a classic pencil. They always give the same spiel every time they include this pencil in the box about Count Alexander von Faber-Castell in 1905. It performs with a smooth application. Its lead is fully bonded with the wood that it's encased in, and that's just to help stop breakages. Yeah. I really like it. It's uh, They're good pencils. I've got a whole tin of them. I love them. Okay, so let's take a look at what it says about the rest of the supplies before we start testing them out and see where we're going with them. So the Daler Rowney Acrylics. System 3 heavy body acrylics, reformulated to offer more pigment and versatility than ever. So this is a new and improved version, I like it. The high pigment load used to give its excellent colour and strength, permanence, light fastness and opacity. They have a superior heavy body consistency, offering a unique peak retention. I love that phrase, peak retention. It reminds me of making um, meringue out of egg whites, because you, you know how you get it to peak so that when you pull your spoon out, it stands up on its own. Ideal for impasto techniques and use with a palette knife or card in inverted commas. It's an extremely versatile and manageable water-based acrylic, but also offers all the virtues of a heavy body consistency. These paints are fully intermixable, which lends to limitless colour combining and blending possibilities. Okay, I'm quite excited about this. We're going to make a mess with this today. Prolon Pro Art Brush. A tinted nylon multimedia purpose brush with a round brush tip, comprised of durable and soft nylon hairs with a good colour carrying capacity. Ideal for clean and crisp paint applications with acrylic and other thickly textured paints, as well as mixed media projects. Very resilient, densely packed bristles, great for use with high viscosity paints such as oil acrylic and heavy body acrylic. Uh, this month's treat is suitable for vegans. There you are, all you vegans out there, you're safe to chew on the bubbly. All right, originally it was an Ergosoft HB pencil. Ergosoft, so that's the Statler pencils. The artboard. Uh, these artboards are perfect for all of your painting and mixed media needs. They are lightweight and sturdy with a pre-primed surface. Okay, so we don't need to gesso them. Ready for direct paint application. They are hard wearing media surfaces, laminated with Optima mixed media paper, ideal for all of your artistic masterpieces. There's three of them, that's good. I do want to test the supplies out on one of these. The really good thing about stuff like this is, and I'm hoping this is sturdy enough to do with, normally with things like this, you can gesso over it. You can either use white gesso or even white acrylic paint and just paint over them and it means you're not wasting a canvas and you can actually use it for something, uh, you know, an actual artwork rather than just messing about testing out the materials. It talks about the palette knife. The palette knife card is great for creating various textural dimensions to your artwork. You can cut it, slice it, bend it and more to bring texture to the heavy body acrylics. It can also be used for mixing your colours before application, keeping your paints pure and your brushes clean. Scroller challenge, facial topography. Oh, well, that's interesting. So when we're talking about topography, it's usually the peaks and troughs of things, which obviously we've got this kind of paint. And uh, I think I know already what I'm gonna do, which is awesome, because that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> but first of all, before we get cracked into the scroller challenge, I'm gonna take a quick look at the scroller zine and then we'll have a play about these materials. Uh, yeah, okay, so it talks about the artboards and a nice round brush tip, <laughs> round brush tip. So, Bastien, hello Bastien. He talks a little bit here about 
the different things about his style and his different paintings. So this is quite a nice little interview. So grab your coffee for that. Scrawler tips for the paint. If you've never used acrylic paint before, I highly recommend reading this. I keep forgetting to do that. Thankfully, I have been playing about with acrylic, so I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable about it. My favourite part is the scrawler gallery and these are just absolutely lovely. I, I really, really enjoy looking at everyone else's artwork but it's really nice to see it on paper and not on a screen. So we can see lots of different people's take on the the box that had the Darwin Inktense blocks in them. So we're talking a little bit about texture here as well. I like this little section here about different techniques and things like that. That's always quite interesting. And then they have an update section. I'm not going to spoil all that for you, obviously you want to read it yourselves, but that's just a nice little bit of reading with a cup of tea, probably on a Sunday morning, so it might be an idea to go and get your cup of tea out and start flicking through. So we do indeed have three, they're not ridiculously stiff, you know, they've got a bit of give in them. The, although there is texture on them, they're not, I wonder if I, this is always really difficult to try and show you, you'll see it once I put some paint on it. There is a texture there, but it's not really knobbly bobbly. So that's pretty good because if you want to use your pencil to do like an under sketch, the more textured the border the paper is, the more difficult it is to keep those lines neat and consistent, you know, because it kind of like, it just kind of like jiggles over the bobbles in the paper, which isn't always the handiest. But I think we're going to be good with that. Right, oh, so I've got my water. In addition to that, I've got an old rag here. And again, it's something I just like to keep handy when I'm painting. Oh. It does feel very, I would say it's like a toothpaste consistency coming out of the tube, which is what we would hope and expect, otherwise we're in trouble. <laughs> I'm really liking this process blue colour, the lemon yellow. Yeah, I don't know if you can see this or not, but as it's coming out the tube, it's actually coming out in a cylindrical shape and that's because it is this heavy bodied stuff and it's meant to hold its shape. So I'm going to quick squish the lid back on before any more decides to ooze out. Out ooze, that's a good word. So we'll start with this yellow. <laughs> Let's go for it. So in its purest form, the colours are very, very vibrant. We're going to be able to get a lot of texture with that. So that's good. The only thing I find with this is it does tend to stick to your brush. I even like the way the... the pink one sitting in the tray like it's yeah it's very textured it feels quite smooth though a lot of time with these paints they're very uh they're very sort of lumpy but i feel as if i can smooth that out with my brush without too much of an effort i'm not having to press really hard to do that which is really great as well the other thing i'm interested in here is drying times some acrylics dry really really quickly and oftentimes you need to buy a fluid retarder to stop it drying so quickly so that you've got time to work with it. So I'll be interested to see how this heavy body stuff fares because I've never used a heavy bodied, well, not an intentionally heavy bodied acrylic, you know, one that's, that's what it's put on the earth to do. <laughs> that's a really nice colour. I like that just on its own. Okay, so you can see the texture that even just my simple brush strokes are leaving. And that's part of the fun of this. Now we're going to have to have a little bit of savvy here and think about mixing as well because unless we're going to do something in these very primary colours, we are going to have a few problems. And I have to say, mixing paint colours isn't my strong point. I've never really done much about it, to be honest. Now when I'm doing this for my painting, I will use a bigger... I will use a bigger palette, but also I'll use the palette knife to do it. I'm just doing this because it's right in front of me and I don't want to spend too long faffing about with stuff. So there we go. I've got myself into like a sort of orangey colour there. And if we add a teeny weeny speck of this blue colour, it's all just kind of absorbing into the brush, if I'm honest. Yep, okay, definitely do this with a palette knife, guys. Or as we're going to do with this with the little card that comes in the, in the scroller box. So this, when it comes to mixing, when you've just got the primary colours, I found that you have to pay attention to the volumes of each type of paint that you're using. There you go. And that will determine how far into a certain shade you're going. If I just add a wee tiny bit of yellow to that, and you can see we're starting to go into sort of like an olivey, greeny, almost brown colour. So that's something that you're going to have to sit and play about with if you're not familiar with your mixing. 
and certainly it's something that I need practice with so that's going to be quite handy for what we're going to do. Okay I'm quite pleased with those paints so you can see this is quite watered down so you can thin it out if you want a smoother finish maybe for a background or something like that and then when we really start to get into this idea of the the topography and using really using the texture of the paint then we can use it with a lot less water in it almost neat and you can see there you've got that lovely texture on the paint so i just wanted to test out as well how this pencil is going to go on on this um what did they call it art board because if we're if we're going to start sketching stuff out now that's going down quite heavily and I'm not pressing at all. So my next question is, is it going to erase? It doesn't really matter in truth because this is really opaque. So you're going to be covering it up anyway. But when you're actually putting your initial sketch down, I always like to be able to erase what I've done. So the first thing I want to try, I've got one of these little battery operated erasers here. And these tend to mess with the surface of textured things. But this is quite hardy, I think. So it's erased fine, but... Ah, it's kind of tickled the texture of the paper, so you might oh, want to use one of them. If we go in with a kneaded eraser, obviously these are a bit more gentle. And if we dab, it is lightening those lines up. But if we've made a mistake, we don't want to lighten lines up. We want to take them away so that when it comes to painting, we're not confused about which lines we should be using. So if I just go very gently with this, and again, I'm hardly touching the paper. I'm only just putting pressure on it and no more. And that is taken away most of the graphite and it doesn't seem to have damaged the integrity of the paper that I can see with the naked eye so that's always good to note as well. I'm just going to get tidied up here a little bit and get myself set up and we can get on with the scroller challenge. Let's go! All right, so I am ready to rock. As I've just been sort of moving stuff around here and tidying up a little bit, I've got a few concerns that have come to mind about what I want to paint. The thing that I want to paint, I am going to struggle with these three colors. If they had provided me with a white, things would have been a lot easier. So I'm a bit kind of miffed about that. I don't really go in for, you know, sort of alternative styles and impressionism that kind of thing so this is going to be really difficult for me but I'm going to see what I can do and it's going to push me a little bit so why not the other thing that I've done is I've just gone all out the reflection that you can see from a ring light this is uh, my acrylic uh, <laughs> palette that I use when I'm painting at an easel for big pictures the reason that I've brought this over is I'm going to have to do a hell of a lot of mixing so I need plenty of space so I'm going to shift this over to this side so that the ring light doesn't distract y'all because we can't be having any of that so I'll just pop that there. So it is going to look as if I'm mixing paint on the table, but I'm not, I promise. Now, one of the things I was thinking about is a background for this. Now, because this paint is opaque, technically we should be able to paint over the top. We can work in layers and they should cover up the under layers without any problem. I I'm going to sketch out what it is I want to do and I'm going to put a background colour down first, but I'm going to try and not go into that sort of middle part because I don't want to have to wait ages and ages for layers to dry. When I was clearing up there and just sort of farting about, I uh, did keep an eye on the time and these ones that we'd put on this board earlier, the neat paint, which was just a damp brush I'd used to pick it up, so that was the most textured ones, they took about 10 minutes to dry properly, you know, whereby when you were touching the actual textured parts, it wasn't like sinking under your finger, even though it wasn't like sticking to your hand. So that gives you a rough guide, so you're not going to have to wait too long. So the first thing I want to do is mix a background. Uh, not having a white, it's going to be very difficult to lighten up colours. Normally when you're using paint, if it's watercolour paint, if you want a lighter incarnation of the colour that you're working with, all you have to do is dump some water in it and it will come out much more um, transparent and you can go from there. Not so with acrylic and oil paint and not having white means that getting lighter incarnations of a particular colour that you've mixed is very, very difficult and that is going to be the main challenge for me today. And uh, I have decided to go for a bit of a doggy portrait today. I'm sure that will surprise none of you because you should know me by now. If you new here I like to draw animals in nature that's what I do I tend to steer clear of people because I don't like really like people I don't like drawing them either <laughs> <sighs> anyway I just want to get some outlines out first so I've decided to go for uh, just because the, we're talking about topography here and as I said that that's uh, like peaks and troughs and I've decided to go for an Airedale with 
a very specific haircut. Schnauzers quite often have a similar haircut. Haircut. <laughs> They're often groomed in the same way and they have this lovely sort of slope. You know, they keep the fur quite thick up round where where their eyes and their eyebrows is, are and then they come down to their nose so they look as if they've almost got like a hook in their muzzle and then they have this lovely big long beard and then they get trimmed in quite short you know in around their neck again and I just love it I think it looks absolutely adorable that's kind of where we're going with this so I want to have this lovely curve down here and then we've got this part that comes into the mouth round about here and then as I say they've just got this big sort of hairy beard part <laughs> I don't know why and this is going to sound really silly but um, I am I'm quite a fan of Tom Hardy the actor and he plays a lot of roles where he has this great big sort of bushy under beard and that's kind of what this reminds me of. If Tom Hardy was a dog I think he'd be an Airedale. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, the other reason I wanted to pick an Airedale is that they have got quite textured fur, you know, it's quite sort of curly and crinkly, especially around their faces, so I thought that would be a really nice, a really nice thing to be able to do, and then they've got little kind of tufty eyebrows here, so we really only want like a really basic outline, we're not spending any sort of time putting in any details, simply because the paint is going to do all the work for us. Try and do this as far up as I can so that I've got enough room to show you what's going on. Yeah, I'm just going to slip a piece of paper underneath my palette so that you can see what I'm mixing because obviously with the desk being quite dark, it's quite difficult to see. So yeah, I'm just going to plonk out some of this up here just now. I'm going to start mixing this and see if we can get a little bit of green on the go. Try and get all that blue mixed in. I would actually prefer to do this with a really small palette knife, but in the interests of keeping things all about the challenge. And then I want to mix up some orange as well. And after that, I'm gonna mix the orange with the green to give me that sort of slightly um, olive color. You know, heading into a kind of sagey green that we did over here. I'm going to have to work quite quickly here. This is the thing I don't like about acrylics, especially not being pr proficient in mixing colours. I feel as if I just need a little bit more time with the paint. It's so pretty. See, when you're actually mixing it, it's very satisfying because you get this lovely sort of gradient while you're, you know, when you're in the process of it. So I'm just going to drag some of this green across now. Ooh, it's starting to dry already. And uh, I'll just see if I can mix in some of this orange. It's very dark. This is what I was worried about. But you can see it's starting to change colour now. And we're going to that more sort of earthy green as opposed to this sort of very viridian hue that we had over here. Okay, and then I'm just going to take a plop of water in here. Because this is for a background. And again, I tend to favour very light backgrounds. And as I'm doing this, it is drying horrendously quickly. So... We're going to have to be quick. And it's situations like this where having a bigger brush would be really helpful. I may not even go for a full solid background. Because again, I was thinking about the, uh, the, the featured artist's artwork. And that is a very smooth background. And I would be suspicious that that has most likely been digitally enhanced. And I'm not saying it has, but there is a high probability. And it's one of the reasons that I object to a lot of things about social media and how people portray things because it's not always the real thing or 100% real and I kind of like to keep it real. Oh, right, let's get in around these nose. And all I'm doing is I'm just dipping my brush very quickly into water there and it's just to keep this paint mobile while we... While we go about our business here, I am sacrificing the body of the paint for the for being able to lighten it up. And that's just something that, well, we're just having to deal with. Right, so the other thing I need to do is I need to mix myself up some sort of dark colour. And again, I'm not likely to get black. So I'm just going to pick up everything I've got here and smoosh it all together. And even if it gives us some sort of muddy brown, that would be fine. I would take a muddy brown right now and this is just for his nose and his eyes I basically just want to pop in and this is probably one of the only parts of this painting that I want to be really smooth which isn't going to be the easiest thing to do I don't think and we'll just pop his nose in as well 
And this brush is actually A-OK -okay for this. It's got quite a nice point on it, so it's not causing too many problems. Now we may want to have some few a few dark hairs here. So I may just add a few little cheeky ones in here. So again, I'm just going to take my yellow and then I want to make up a kind of like a violet colour. First of all, I'll use this side and I'll get going with this orange. I can tell straight away that's going to be really, really dark. So I want to fling some more yellow into that and really make sure that that's mixed well. And then I can go to town with this and try and get some sort of violet shade as well. And that needs a lot more pink in it. Told you I wasn't very good at paint mixing. Better-ish, I suppose. Very, very dark though. Oh, I'm scared to do this because I don't want to ruin my perfect paint. Okay, I might take that actually. That's actually not far, far off. It's not great, but it's, um, it's certainly better than what I was expecting, so. <laughs> Let's start with his neck. And we just want to start creating some texture here. Oh, that was maybe a bit thick for a fir for a first layer, but never mind. Oh. So I'm really thinking about the direction of the the fur as well here. You know, and how it actually grows on the on the subjects, as it were. Now, and I know that their ears are actually quite smooth, so I don't want to be I don't want to be going ham with the, these brush strokes. I'm finding this paint quite difficult to work with in the sense that it's, it's very, it's very full bodied. It's very full bodied. Um, it's not been the most cooperative and it is drying really, really quickly, which we knew would happen. You know, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm thinking maybe I should have had like a base coat of color down first, like a watered down coat. I don't know whether that would have been a good idea or not. I'm also thinking at this stage as well that keeping a white background would have been a better idea. Okay, so they've got these little tufty eyebrows that just sort of do their own thing. Now obviously this depends very much on the owner and how they, how they groom them. So the other thing as well you'll notice is that my pencil lines are, are very, very, very gradually but definitely starting to, starting to disappear. Now the hair, and it's the same with every dog, they've got this kind of awkward spot at their collar where everything sort of comes together and they end up with a tuft that sticks out. Um, on Pip and Jock I call it their mane. <laughs> and it's just a really awkward bit of hair basically. Now the hair underneath the eye as well, and I've noticed this in a lot of sort of longer haired dogs, the hair always sort of comes down in a little swoosh like this. You know, it surrounds their eye. And then you can have everything else is pretty chaotic everywhere <laughs> everywhere else. I'm trying not to be too careful with my brush strokes here, you know, because I'm thinking that we are trying to get this texture in, but I'm so used to being like really precise and, you know, very, uh, very detailed and delicate. So that's, that's kind of what I'm struggling with, you know, for myself right now. But I really want this part under here to be really dark. So I'm going to layer up some of this because we really want to, to show that he's got some sort of like shape in his face. I'm going to take what's left of this brown that I've got and I'm basically just going to smoosh it into some of this darker colour before it dry or before it dries okay it's like practically dry and I just want to grab some of that and add in a sort of darker area here because quite a lot of the Airedales do have a do have a darker section that runs down from the back of their heads so you can see there even with watered down paint that texture is still sticking from the layer underneath which is great that's what we want now i'm not happy with his nose i feel as if his nose has receded into his face so i'm gonna have to and this is one of the brilliant things about acrylic paint is that you can paint over what you've done do you know i feel as if his eye needs to be bigger oh i might have paved the way for disaster here guys Okay, so I've just cleaned my palette off a little bit, give myself a bit more space, things were getting a bit ridiculous. The next layer I want to do is a layer of orange to go on top of this. I'm trying to think in layers here and how we're going to build this up. I seem to be quite heavy handed with the pink. Wait till we see now, this will be too yellow, I can guarantee it. I just want to make sure I've got it mixed 
properly. And let's start thinking about getting a bit of dimension in here. So I wanted to keep this part dark. So we're not trying to complete, oh, <laughs> she says, we're not trying to completely cover up what's underneath, but we do want to just keep adding more and more texture. And I'm aiming, I'm aiming for the little white bits. I'm gonna have to let that part dry. Because we kind of want this separation from the hair that's poking out from behind on the other side of his face to the hair that's actually coming down from his nose here. And we'll do the same up here as well because we want this to be pronounced from the areas underneath. And I might just leave in this area here, I might just leave that little bit of white. Isn't he adorable? He's adorable already. <gasps> so into this now, what I've got left, I'm just going to add more yellow. Oh. Scoop it all up, squish it out. Scoop and squish. Scoop and squish. Okay, let's try this. I have to say my paintbrush isn't holding up very well. Okay, so now I'm thinking more about highlights than anything else. So I've got my kind of apricotty colour here. Apricotty. And I really want to focus this on the ears, just along this front part, because I really want his ears to be a bit lighter than this. And this part round the eye that I was talking about, and maybe down the front here as well. Now my underneath layers are starting to get quite dry, so I've really, I've got a lot of texture going on here. If I just tip it that way, you can see it in the light. There is a lot going on. Oh, that was far too much. Oh, okay. Let's see. <laughs> We're going to have to get a move on with this. Goodness me. I always think that the hair down the bottom seems to get really grubby. I know that's like, you know, there's obvious reasons for that, but I always just think it's quite funny. You know, the hair around their mouth gets pretty icky looking, especially when they get older. If anybody's ever had an older dog with slightly longer hair, you'll be perfectly aware of what I'm talking about. Around their eyes as well. Bless them. Okay, I'm going to take some straight yellow now and just sort of tap some of this in. Where we want those lightest areas. Yeah, his ear looks much better like that. So we've got most of the texture there now. It's not really about texture, it's just about trying to create some more contours as it were. Okay, much happier with this now. I've actually, I've sort of lost the curvature of his nose in all this chaos with this texture. But do you know what? That's actually, I'm okay with that. I'm actually surprisingly okay with that. So let's just be at peace with it. <sighs> now I went a wee bit up here and again, it's just to show that he's got some sort of jawline. Yeah, that looks okay, doesn't it? I don't want to go too far with this. And this is something in terms of acrylic, I am still learning when, like when the time to stop is. Like obviously when it comes to pencil work, I know when to call it a do, like I know when enough's enough, but it's really difficult with acrylic because you just think, oh, I could just add a little bit more in there, kind of like I'm doing just now and ruining things. And I just don't seem to have that off mechanism yet. Okay, um, I think I'm getting very close to stopping here because it's starting to look okay. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it. I'm not sure whether to leave the background alone or not. I really want to put some blue in the background. Uh, but I don't, I think it's too late for that now. I think I should just leave it, leave it be. And I am, I've decided I'm going to go and get a little bit of white acrylic and it is literally just to put a dot in his eyeball. In fact, I might even do it with a Posca pen. I don't know if this is going to work on top of here, but. See, instantly better, like literally instantly better. I might even put a little wet bit on the end of his nose. What do we think? <gasps> Okay, that makes me so much happier, but it has made me start to like want to, oh. Is this cheating? Yes, it probably is, but I'm not gonna deny myself the pleasure here of this tiny, tiny little addition to what I'm doing. I'm really not. And if y'all want to shout at me, that's fine. Just uh, do it in the comments. That's not a problem, I don't mind. That's just made all the difference, I think. I've cut, that just shows you how much a couple of tiny little dots of paint can change something so dramatically. I it just, it's made him come to life. And do you know what? I'm actually really pleased with that and I am going to stop right there before I ruin things. Um, I have had so much fun with this. This is, this is great. 
and I hope you can see like the texture in this there is a lot of texture in the picture and that's what this prompt was all about so okay maybe I didn't make the best decision on a background maybe I was too hasty maybe it's just because I'm filming off the you know off the cuff here and that's one thing you've got to remember guys I have no expectation on myself when I'm doing these scroller challenges because I'm literally filming this within the space of like an hour or two and it's just whatever comes off the top of my head maybe if I'd had more time to plan then I might have done this slightly differently but it's really good to just throw yourself in at the deep end that's how we learn and I've learned quite a lot from doing this already I was really worried about not having white and I've realized that I really didn't have to panic so that's a really nice feeling and uh, my mixing skills with primary colors has probably got like, this much better <laughs> but anyway I would love to know what you guys think of the box and I would love to know what you think of this if you've got a name for this little guy so I will take suggestions for his name down in the comments section as well and uh, I want to thank you very much for watching I want to say special thanks actually because I think by the time that this video goes out we will have hit 5,000 subscribers I'm going to address that in a separate video so for those of you I know some of you just come and dip in for these unboxing videos but for those of you who stick because of that I just want to say thank you so much it means a lot and it's just really great to have a hobby that's got out of hand like this. So I'll leave you with that, guys. Look after each other. Stay safe. And I'll see you back in the cave on Thursday for another video. Have a good day, everyone. And bye for now.